Anchorage has no particular right to the movement of 540,000 barrels of oil per day from Superior to Sarnia. And the lens of the study for the transport of that exact amount of oil is one of the biggest faults of the study. We have no need for this much oil, and it is not our state's responsibility to move this much oil. 64 years ago, Michigan made a deal with a Canadian pipeline company. We did so not yet fully understanding the value and fragility of our waters. We also did so with stipulations. This pipeline would be maintained properly. But Enbridge has repeatedly broken those stipulations. They have repeatedly broken the safety measures of that agreement. We would be perfectly justified in our decision to prioritize our water-dependent economy and way of life. We would be perfectly justified to shut down Line 5. Seven years ago, Enbridge spilled over a million gallons of oil into a Michigan creek. And today, oil still sits in those waters. And Enbridge made lemons into lemonade for their shareholders. They sidestepped um, long permitting and public input processes. They piecemealed together a huge expansion project, which more than doubled the capacity of Line 6B. Line 6B's expansion was the first phase of Enbridge's Eastern Access Initiative, which we must pay attention to now because it has turned Michigan into a conduit for Canadian oil to move from Canada to Canada. In the second phase, Enbridge reversed the flow of Line 9. Canadian refineries praised the move. The line previously moved oil west to Sarnia, and it now moves oil east, taking oil from that expanded Line 60 and moving it past Detroit and Sarnia to Montreal, Quebec, and beyond. It was the last nail in the coffin on the story that Enbridge's pipelines were serving Michigan. We now have 369,000 more barrels of Enbridge oil moving through Michigan than the total refining capacity can be, that can be used in Detroit, Toledo, and some other refineries. Assuming that no other pipelines are serving the region, which they are, Enbridge still has access beyond what is regionally needed. The specifics of dynamic risk studies are conservative to say the least. Even so, the results of the analysis point to decommissioning as the clear answer. If I were to tell you that one in 60 people undergoing an elective surgery would die from that surgery, you would not choose to go in for it. If I were to tell you that gas prices would increase two cents a gallon tomorrow, I doubt you would even bother to fill up your car tonight. If I were to tell you that a clear solution to transporting propane to the UP would be installing a new, safer four-inch pipeline, may I finish, please? Wrap up. Um, were to install a safer four-inch pipeline, and the pipeline company involved in the discussion had not even brought it up, you would realize that the interests of our state are not on this company's list of priorities. It's time to shut down my time. Thank you.